the highest highs and my lows have good densities nice blacks there and it's it looks like there's really nice volume all around and it looks like I'm pretty lucky on my first test trip to um, get this uh, definition of course I was using the previous notes for the first print that I made which I sold and that's why I'm making a second print to uh, because I sold the first print so it's perfect so I'm just going to write down the technical details for my printing and then I'll make the print okay so it's rolly paper and contrast is one and a half and the height is 22.1 and it's my condenser head set at a 4x5 negative it's f5.6 so the lens is wide open and the exposure is 145 1 minute 45 seconds and it's 130 in the deck tall 130 2 to 1 deck tall 2 to 1 and I, now I'm going to compensate for my corners as usual because the corners are usually about one stop uh, colder than the rest of the picture but I don't want to make a long exposure of uh, three minutes so I'm going to expose the corners for two and a half minutes instead of uh, one minute and 30 seconds because it would be double of 145 so I have to dodge it from 230 to 145 and that's my print and I marked down that I used another paper okay I got my little light by the enlarger and I just double check my print to make sure that I'm not clipping any of the corners or sides or anything like that. Everything's fine. And I'm ready to do my print. So it's a long exposure, 1 minute 45 seconds, uh, generally I don't like to have such long exposures, but these things do happen, and it's no big deal, it's just uh, a little longer, that's all, you just have to be very careful and to be very still. This floor, this bench is a little shaky, and the floor isn't, the shake isn't most solid, it's not on concrete, so I don't want any thing to shake and make the image blurry. Line it up on my easel beautifully. Here's my dodging mask. And I uh, put it at one 2.30 and I take it away at 1.45 so my dial is moving so I know it's and I just burn the corners a little bit just to compensate for the vignetting of the lens And I was very, always a little bit of a gentle movement with the uh, masking material. And at 145, I just pull it away gently. And that way, the full negative ex gets exposed on the paper. And I will be exposing my sheet. Okay, that's 145. Just step away from my bench. Okay, so my paper's exposed. I get my gloves, my knife.
nice, clean, beautiful gloves. And I put them on. I slide the paper in nice and evenly so it slides in properly and swiftly into the developer. It's a sort of short developing time because it's one and a half minutes. And I agitate it for 15 seconds. Here I come up to my mark and I slide it in and it's fully submerged very fast. And I agitate it for 15 seconds like this. Nice. And swiftly I rub the surface. And the image starts forming at 15 second mark as the test strip. And it's, and it's nice and dense by the 25 second mark. I stop agitating. I over agitate it by about 10 seconds. I go into the half minute, I agitate it for 10 seconds. These are nice agitation techniques. Good fresh developer going slide 10 seconds. Nice, the image practically fully formed. And nice contrasty negative. I'm coming up to my one minute mark, I agitate it for 10 seconds and then I pull it out 10 seconds before the one and a half minute mark. Here I go, I agitate it gently because my image is almost fully formed, I can tell it's really hot, so I hardly agitate it all. Oh, and that's it. I pull it out at the 120 mark so it drips for 10 seconds and then it goes into the stop. It's a hot image, the image is formed fast, so I won't do it for more than one and a half minutes, that's for sure, in the developer. The longer it's in the developer, the higher the contrast. And here we go, that's one and a half minutes, swiftly into the stop bath, like that. Beautiful work. And I agitate it gently for one and a half minutes or one minute. Nice, beautiful, happy, happy, happy. Good stuff. And I try obviously not to scratch the surface of the print. But I'm just running the chemistry over the surface nicely. So that's about good for the stop. I'm pretty happy with that. And now I can pull it out and put it in the fixer. The fixer dissolves the unexposed silver halide crystals. Now these crystals do not dissolve easily in water. They're very insoluble. But the fixer is sodium thiosulfate, which is a highly dissolvable substance, and it helps dissolve the other salts. And now I just rub the surface gently for one minute until I can turn on the light. And basically with the fixer, you do kind of need constant agitation. It doesn't have to be very vigorous. Just kind of gentle, just pushing the paper to the bottom of the tray and just kind of making sure there's a flow of fresh chemistry on the surface. So we're at the half minute mark. Here. And so far I think that print looks pretty good. Really, you know, a lot of printing has to do with subjectivity and balances between the white and the blacks and the whole image and individual parts of the image. It's really kind of a yin and yang thing. 
all around and in the details. So it's difficult to sometimes to get a good yin and yang in the hole and in the details. But we'll see what it looks like once I turn on the light. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll wash my hands. And so I'm just going to just rinse the fixer off of my hands and push this other print down. This is my cold water storage here. And generally I do four prints a day. And now I go and turn on the light. That's the light. Now I go and look at my print. Well, you know, it looks really beautiful. I find it a little con more contrasty than the other print, and I, I guess that has to do with the different paper, you know, it's the same paper but a different cut or a different batch. But other than that, I think it's just beautiful, it has a nice silky effect, and uh, according to the test strip, the blacks won't be as black, and I can test check it out tomorrow. So I put it back in the fixer, and I continue agitating for another two minutes. And get a close-up of how I fix this, okay? How I agitate it. See, so basically this is a good technique. Just kind of let it constantly and then pushing the print down. It's very gentle. It's, I'm not scratching the surface or anything like that. And there's always fresh chemistry going through the surface of the print. Very sweet. So I'm at my two minute mark now. Okay, so it's been in there at least three minutes. With this clock, I figure it's more like four minutes because that clock is at uh, is a 60 hertz clock from North America, and right now I'm in France at 50 hertz. So if it's a one minute, it's actually a minute and 10 seconds or something like that. Now it goes in my cold water storage, and it looks too contrasty to me. More contrasty than the first one, but it's, I think it's acceptable, and I'm, I'll let it dry down and see what it looks like. So I just put it in that cold water here. I'll add a little more cold water. Okay, now I wash my gloves.